we we're going to yeah we're, we're going to need some shofar blowers we're going to need some are you recording yes okay wonderful well thank you everybody for uh for coming and joining and spending a friday night with us you could be not doing anything else because it's against the law right now so thanks for coming and uh, spending time with us here um so for some of you this is something that we've done annually for i don't know how many times how many years have we, 10 years now that we call Tarua in the heartland um and being that ohio is the heart of it all right and and so we we named it and dave said that i do some interior decorating and, and so uh, I'm going to get my man card pulled away here if you keep telling them what all I did. Um, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to be here and, and to spend time with, with my friends and my family and, and to worship the Lord. And so a couple of things. Um, this is an interactive thing. It is not something that we're going to be super religious about. And that's not the purpose of tonight. Um, in the past, did you lose me? We're good. Okay. Um, in the past, I have, I have tended towards being super religious about it and, and it really doesn't, Sam's laughing at me. Uh, it really doesn't produce a whole lot. And so what you have in your hands is a prayer guide and the majority of these prayers come out of either an Orthodox, um, sitter or a uh, or a messianic sitter um, now there are some things like any good theologically sound person i mixed and matched whatever i felt sounded good to me so um, there are there are a lot of traditional verses that will be responsive i'll be the reader so if you look through your book here um, if you flip to say page eight you'll see reader and congregation so I'll read and, and so there'll be some, some call and response. If you have never been through a, an actual Orthodox, what they would call Rosh Hashanah service, I encourage you, uh, I encourage you to watch one online or maybe go to Beth Messiah sometime, some year and, and partake in it. It's, it's a fantastic experience. Um, the people blowing the shofars are a lot better than we're probably going to be tonight. They're amazing. Um, so I encourage you to find one of those services and, and watch it and, and see what um, our brother Judah has been doing for quite some time, thousands of years. Um, so let me just ask for the Lord's help and guidance and, um, and then we'll just kind of set the set the stage and, and we'll go through it so father we just we thank you we thank you that we can gather together as friends and family we thank you that uh, we can we can be here together celebrating your son and uh, we lift up the name yeshua tonight we lift up the king the king of kings and our desire is to make tonight about our king and uh lord we just we thank you we ask you uh, just to show us mercy as we try to mumble our way through this and um, look at our hearts and see that we really do have a desire to learn. And although we may not be doing things perfectly, Lord, we have a desire to be here. We have a desire to honor you. And uh, we ask you to move in our lives. We ask, I ask for every person here that in this season that they would um, come into to a face-to-face -face encounter with you, Lord. And we ask you these things in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen? Okay. So, Dave, thank you for letting us do this, hosting, Scott. Can you move the screen a little bit? Sure. Is that better? Okay. Hi, friend. Uh, there's, a, there's a prayer book right over here if you want to grab one. Okay. So... There are, we will not be doing this in Hebrew unless we have any Hebrew scholars in here. You might be a Hebrew scholar, no. Um, this will be in English. What, what I have done with this um, is I, I spent quite a bit of time with 
a Messianic synagogue years ago, and um, uh, their liturgy is sung. So the Hebrew liturgy is sung. And um, so I, I took for a lot of these traditional prayers that we're going to go through, I took the melody for those Hebrew prayers and I, I just applied them to the English that we have. And so we'll go through the Shema, we'll sing the Shema, we'll do um, the Avot, we'll do Mika Mocha. Um, and some of these things are sung and I may, depending on how comfortable uh, the, the Yoder kids are in coming up here and just helping and singing. I, you, you probably don't know the melodies, but um, so we're going to go through some things that are probably not, uh, you're not familiar with, but um, I encourage you to, to, to listen to the melodies and get familiar with these things, because these are things we're going to be singing in the kingdom one day. And so uh, when we sing the Shema, uh, there are things that are going to happen one day in the kingdom, and there are things that are, are being counterfeited in the earth that relate to the Shema. And so um, I'm not a person who says that we need to, to stick to the liturgy and, you know, buy a bunch of sitters for, for Shabbat or anything like that. But I think it is good to be familiar with the prayer service because um, this is something that's been intact dating back to the time when Yeshua was walking the earth. So, okay. Yom Teruah. So you may notice that we're using the word Yom Teruah rather than Rosh Hashanah. It's not that we're against Rosh Hashanah per se, but that's not the phrase or the term that the Bible uses when it's referring to this day. So the phrase or the name that's being used when, when um, the Lord is referring to this day in the Bible is Yom Teruah. And it just means day of blowing or day of making a shout, day of making a noise. And there's a lot of allusions and things that these dress rehearsals that we're going through uh, relate to uh, end time prophecies that we won't really go into, but these are shadows and dress rehearsals of things um, where there are lots of allusions made in the New Testament specifically to this day about trumpets being blown and um, certain things happening. There's uh, prophecies in the book of Zechariah that actually goes right through the fall feast days. And so um, this is probably not new, but I'm, I'm not going to pretend that everybody knows everything about the feast days. So I'm going to just uh, allow this to be a, a semi-teaching service while we're praying at the same time. So this is not formal. Um, if you have questions, raise your hand. If we don't know, we'll tell you we don't know, and we'll try to make something up that sounds good. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable because this is maybe not something that you've ever done before. So with that being said, um, can I ask a favor of Ruth? Would you start us off by, and I have it over here, um, but I'm going to move it to where we are. Would you like the festival light? One of the traditional um, items that are had at a Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah uh, table is a round braided hollow loaf. Does anybody know why we have a round one? What they use for the hollow loaf? Is that on the mm -hmm. what they have? What's it symbolize? What's it symbolize? The crown. Oh, yeah, that's right. Symbolizes a crown. This, this is specifically a feast that is all about the kingship of Jesus Christ. And it's about, so if you're, you're familiar with the, the um, time frame leading up to it, the season or the month leading up to Yom Teruah is called Elul. And during that time, there's a phrase used, the king is in the field. And there's a parable that Jesus told about um, sowers going forth to sow and there was different kinds of seed and good seed and, and his, his disciples came up afterwards and they said tell us about this parable and he said if you don't understand this parable now I'm paraphrasing if you don't understand this parable you won't understand any of the parables and he says in there the field is the world and so 
when we're talking about the king being in the field, um, he is, he is, it's giving us an illusion that he is walking through the earth, examining the fruit of our lives and looking for a harvest. And so something that our, our past prophetic teachings have funneled our minds towards is that um, the, the end time scenario is one of judgment of God's people. And that's correct because, you, because Yom Kippur is, is judgment day. That's the day that the books are sealed. However, judgment for God's people is framed always in the Bible biblically for people who are truly trying to seek God, okay? It's justice. So God's people in the Bible, where this is framed is in the Exodus, where he gave judgment to his people and he brought them out of their slavery. And then he took them and taught them how to, how to walk and live with him and then took them into their promises. And so we will see a distinction amongst, amongst people who are believers and walking with the Lord and people who say they are and aren't walking with the Lord. And this is a time where we uh, are encouraged to be seeking God, repenting of things that specifically he's bringing forth to us and seeking to make amends, especially in broken relationships. And this is a time where uh, mending of broken relationships are available because it's a season, it's, it's especially on God's heart in this time. Okay, because we can't have a mending of our relationship with the Lord until first we have a forgiveness of the people that we have broken relationships with and bitter root judgments and other things. Does that make sense? And so we're encouraged to make amends on these broken relationships. And, and so I would ask the, that the Lord would speak to each, each and every person here and bring to mind anything that, that perhaps you need to either forgive somebody with or make amends for, because it's important that that gets pulled out of your life so that you can now go and stand in front of the Lord and be clean and holy and pure before him and not have any bitter judgments that you're bringing into that situation. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'll give you a, a Bible verse that we're, we're going to talk about here, or we'll, we'll actually say tonight, it's in Psalm 24, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Okay. Clean hands is an equity term. It's a legal term. Equity is a form of, of law and justice. And what it means is you're not coming with ulterior motives. You're coming clean and pure and you are who you are. Does that make sense? So um, we, do we have a, uh, do we have matches? Matches. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh, All right. So if you could just say these two prayers here while you're while you, while you light one and then light one. So okay. go ahead and light it and, and I'll hold this hold the mic up to you. So Blessed are you, Yehovah, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in the Messiah, Yeshua. And instructed us to be the light of, to the world. <laughs> You got a lot of light. Yeah. 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 And has preserved us and has enabled us to, to reach this season. Thank you. Can we give her a round of applause? <clears throat> the Bible is an honor and a 
in the book. And so it's important that we honor Pastor David and Sister Ruth um, this evening for allowing us to be here and um, allowing us to come under their roof and under their care. And, and Scott and Janine and the kids and all your help. So I want to thank you all for, for hosting us and allowing us to be here because it's not easy to do that, you know. So very, very much appreciate what all, what all you do here. Um, so the next one we're going to move on to, it's called the Disciples Prayer or the Lord's Prayer. Have you ever sung it before? Have anybody ever sung it? All right, we'll go slow. You, you two have, I know that, and I know my kids have. Um, you know. All right. So I'm actually, I'm usually not nervous to sing up in front of people, but I am tonight, which is kind of strange. Shouldn't be, huh? <laughs> come on, Gene, come up here. Oh, yes. It's true, that's true. All right, well, um, if you know the melody or if you want to sing along and, and hum along or whatnot, then if not, just um, let me, if, if you would allow me to minister to you tonight, um, I'd be honored to do that. So, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Great job, everybody. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Let's all say together. Father of all and master of the world, with reverence in our hearts and gratitude to you, we gather together to worship you on this Feast of Trumpets. Your years are without limit, and a thousand years in your sight are like but a moment. Man's years are numbered, and every hour is precious. Teach us to use our time wisely and nobly, usefully and abundantly. May our worship inspire us to speak only that which is wholesome, good, and true. May this season bring us strength and understanding, new hope, and new courage, new joys, and new blessings. Amen. What you will notice about a traditional Hebraic prayer service is that the focus is not upon the people, it is upon the king. And um, this is drawn from the temple when they had the ability to see people's countenances. And so when somebody was downtrodden, they, they knew certain songs to sing that could bring people up. They, when somebody was haughty or prideful, they knew how to exalt to the Lord to bring people back down. And what it does is it puts us in a proper positioning 
to be able to be ministered to by God. And um, that's something that, that I'm always thankful for in this season. But tonight kicks off what are called the 10 days of awe. And it is believed that this is a time when the heavenly councils are gathered together. Um, and it's my belief that this is when the exchange between the Lord and the devil was happening in relation to Job. And so the sons of God would come before the Lord and they would present themselves because this is a season when God's government is in session. And so fruits of the prior year are being examined. Destinies of the upcoming year are being written. And this 10 days, the whole world sort of hangs in the balance of where we are, where our hearts are, and what our trajectory is, and whether that is to change or remain on the course that it's on. And then Yom Kippur, uh, 10 days from now, is what is called Judgment Day. And this is the day that um, the books are believed to be sealed. All of the, the judgments are written and um, handed down. And then that which will proceed for the next um, civil year amongst the world will proceed and take forth. Um, it is also believed that this is the day that the world was created. And more specifically, actually, not the day the world was created, but actually the day that Adam was created. If you, if you um, take the word Bereshit, which is the first word of the Bible, and you flip it around, it says on the first of Tishri. So that's where they get that from. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. It's interesting to think about, right? Um, the point of all of this is not to make us feel holy because that doesn't come from anything that we can do or say. The point of this is to properly set our hearts and our minds and our, our souls um, in a place where we can give honor to the king of kings and know our place and understand that his work is being accomplished in our lives. And when we can align ourselves with his work, then everything that he has destined for us for our children and our families can come to pass. Okay, so it's a proper position. This is not a religious doodad or doohickey that we're doing to make ourselves feel more religious or, or better about ourselves about what we did tonight. The purpose of this is to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ above every name that is named, all right? And, and to honor him in a place where um, we know that no matter what is happening in the world and um, no matter what is happening here or abroad or wherever, that the Lord now is on his throne and the Lord is sitting and he's judging the affairs of man and he has the heart of kings in his hand and he can turn whichever way he wants him to turn. Okay, so if you all could stand for me briefly and stand for a couple minutes and we're going to give honor to the Lord. This, this prayer is called Borku. Um, we'll use the pronunciation Jehovah tonight. Um, if, you, if you use Yahweh, you know, I hope you'll show us grace or favor. Um, I, I don't claim to know what the proper pronunciation is, and I think if anybody actually did, everybody wouldn't be arguing over it. And so one day the, the Lord will, will give us that, but I don't think I'm not a Hebrew uh, grammar expert. And um, so if anybody is, please give us the pro proper pronunciation. So, okay. Bless Jehovah the Blessed One. With everlasting love, you have loved the house of Israel, not only by teaching us your Torah, commandments, statutes, and your judgments, but by sending us Messiah, who is the hope of Israel and all nations. Therefore, when we lie down and when we rise up, we will meditate on you and rejoice in your word, for they are the length and the life of our days. Day and night we'll meditate on them, for your love will never depart from us. Blessed are you, O Jehovah, who loves your people Israel and all nations. And God spake all these words, saying, I am Jehovah thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Are you familiar with the Shema? The Confession of the Faith? Shema Yisrael, Yehovah Eloheinu, Yehovah Echad. Blessed be the name of His glorious kingdom forever. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Very good. And it shall come to pass that you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. But I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your corn and your wine and your oil. And I will send grass in your fields for your cattle, that you may eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless you perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord gives you. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall teach them your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, and you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and upon your gates, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. You may be seated. Thank you. So I'm going to hit this one while we're here. The Shema is... Um, Jesus 
told us that he could summarize the entire Torah into two commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And the Shema is, in, is an exposition of that. And it's a remembrance of those two things. And the symbolism of the sign upon your hand in front that's between your eyes is what you do and what you think. Because our God is not just a God of confession. He's a God of action. And he's not just a God of action on the outside. He's a God of action on the inside. And so these things all culminate to show us that our actions show us what we actually believe. And our thoughts show us what we actually believe about ourselves and about our God. And it's important that the, the larger Christian body begins to understand the Shema. Because the Shema is, um, it, it is a declaration of who your God is. And it's, it's really, your life is a declaration of who your God is. And so you rest on the seventh day because your God created the earth, the heavens and the earth. And then he rested on the seventh day. And it's a covenant and a sign between him and his people. And, and we do certain things and we think certain things and we don't allow things to overtake our minds or overtake our hearts because we want to be like our Lord. We want to be clean and pure and holy on the inside and the outside. And the reason I'm saying this is because you have um, lots of ideas about what the mark of the beast is. Okay. I don't want to stand up here and say what I think it is, whether it's a number of different things, but I want to talk real briefly about in these latter days, what the meaning of the mark of the beast is. And that is a counterfeit of the Shema. You put the mark of the beast where? On your forehead, between your eyes. Where? On your hand. It's a sign on your head and a sign on your hands. And it's a counterfeit of the Shema. And it will be a test for the whole world that was exactly what was given to Esau when he gave up his birthright for food. And the test is, do you really believe that your God can provide for you in a situation, in a desert wilderness, or whatever it is that you may be going through, do you really believe that God will provide for you in those situations? And, and so he brought our forefathers out of Egypt and brought them into a wilderness, millions of people into a place where there was no water and there was no food to prove that in an impossible situation, he could sustain, provide for, and protect his people. And we will go, if we live through this, through this same exercise. And this is why we, we are doing these feast days and we're, we're, um, we're doing these dress rehearsals because one day it will be a real thing. Okay, and, and perhaps us or our children will have to be posed with the question of, is God going to provide for us or is he not? Right, and that's what the essence of the mark of the beast system is. Without this, you can't buy or sell or have food or provide for your family. So what are you going to do? Well, you're, you don't have a choice. You're going to rely on the Lord and, and he's going to show up, right? So I wanted to hit on that just real, real quickly because how the mark of the beast is administered really is a, makes no difference to me. It's what the significance of the mark of the beast is for God's people is that they are rejecting God if they take it. And it's a very dangerous thing. So let me give you a promise of redemption. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. This is on the backside of Deuteronomy 28 with all the blessings and the cursings for keeping or not keeping God's commandments. And then Deuteronomy 29, which is a further administration of, of those things. And Deuteronomy 30 is saying, okay, this is going to happen. It's going to happen. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before you, and you shall call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you and shall return unto the Lord your God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, you and your children, 
with all your heart and with all your soul, that then the Lord your God will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. Now this is, look around. Were you raised this way? I mean, these beautiful children were raised this way. Thank God. But we weren't, were we? So we're literally living this prophecy right now. We're calling these things to mind among all of the places that are, not everybody is from here, right? I don't know that we have any natives here. Um, and, and so this is literally happening right now. If any of yours be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from there will the Lord your God gather you, and from there will he fetch you, and the Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it, and he will do you good, and multiply you above your fathers, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. Notice it's, it is the Lord that circumcises our heart. This is alluded to or specifically pointed to by Jesus in Matthew 24, this particular chapter right here about the trumpet sounding and the angels being sent forth to the north and to the south, to the four winds to gather in his people. He's referring specifically to Deuteronomy chapter 38. So be encouraged because we're beginning to see these prophecies come to pass. It tells us we're in the season, okay? Are we there? We don't know. I mean, Dave and I were, we were hoping for a rapture tonight, but we didn't quite get it, did we, Dave? <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do some responsive reading. What this does for me is it firmly, it strengthens my faith. It strengthens my faith. Did I not finish the rest of it? Pay attention, Terry. Jamie, me. Jamie, me. You're not religious enough, Terry. Okay. We do. Praise the Lord. Um, all right, so we're going to do some call and response, some responsive reading. Pay attention to where the focus is. True and faithful is all this, and it is firmly established for us that you are Jehovah our God, and we are your people. You deliver us from the hands of our enemies. You bless those who bless your people Israel, and you curse those who curse us. You perform great deeds that are beyond comprehension miracles and wonders beyond number when your children perceived your power they lauded and gave grateful praise to your name and your kingship they accepted upon themselves willingly moses and the children of israel raised their voices to you in song with abundant gladness and said unanimously i want to pause right there um, i'm gonna grab I do this is going to look like. Is that coming through the mic?
this next one comes from the standing prayer. It was sung three times a day in the temple. And it's the beginning prayer of the Amidah. You know the standing prayer of the Amidah?
I have it recorded. I can send it to you. Okay. So the next one, if you've never heard Howard Silverman, who was the rabbi at Beth Messiah, sing this, it's the most chilling and amazing thing I've probably ever heard sung in my life. And um, so, Avinu Mahina. Um, it's a plea from a child to a father. And those of you who have children, think about the way if, if your child came to you like this, how you would feel. And, and it's important that, I, I'll speak for myself, I've, I've always been fine with the Lord God Almighty, King of hosts, wasting the enemies coming down in a pillar of fire on the throne and peering through me with, yeah, blast them, right? Get them. I have struggled. And, and I, I have struggled to relate to God as a father. And that's been one of the biggest spiritual hindrances of my life since I've been born again. And being here at Carmel has um, really helped me in that area. And, I, and I, I guess I want to honor Pastor David for that because he has a father's heart. And if you see the people around here and the people who are a part of this body, you know how everybody feels about him, and it's because he treats people like a father does. And, and that has helped me tremendously from a spiritual leader standpoint. So I really appreciate that, and I want to honor Pastor David in that, that regard. Um, okay. Avinu Makino. Merciful and answer us, though we plead no merit. Deal with us according to your loving kindness and answer us. Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. All together. Blessed are you, O Jehovah, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in Messiah Yeshua and has instructed us to sound the shofar. Blessed are you, O Jehovah, our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and has preserved us and has enabled us to reach this season. Okay, where are our shofarim? Do we have? You brought one in a bag. We're going to have to have you up here. <laughs> Okay. 
you know the calls. Me too. You want this one? Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Come on. Come on. Okay. So come on, Colleen. Come on. Watch the cord. Um, let me wet my whistle here. All right. So this is the way it's going to go. You call out the shofar blast. And our shofarim are going to give you the blast back. <clears throat> There's three different kinds of blasts. There's a tequila. And the way you call it out is like this. Tequila. Okay. And then we're going to go like this. Lord help me. That's Takia. Okay. And then Shevarim. Shevarim. Nine blasts. And then Trua. Trua. Something like that. <laughs> We're going to be calling in elephants here before too long. <laughs> and then the last one is Tequila Gadola. And that is everybody up here will take a deep breath and will blow as long as we can go. Okay? So, so over the course of this, we're going to hear the show far a hundred times. And um, are we ready? Yeah? Everybody ready? Imagine what that sounded like on the internet. Neighbors is going to be. 
I thought you were crazy now, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord. We'll do that again here in, in a little bit. So I'll need everybody to come back up again. Okay? Are your lips vibrating? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, these are seasons of our joy, so we want to we want to enjoy this time, right? Uh, okay. Responsive reading, Psalm 24. A Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell there. We have sounded on the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He has clean hands and a pure heart. He has not lifted up the soul unto vanity, nor sworn to evil. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, to seek thy faith, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be ye lift up, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord mighty now. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate the King of kings and Lord of lords. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach or Who no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom we honor and call the Lord. All right. Can our chauffeurine come back up again? Sure. Think about it. It's a, it's a musical pause. It means think about it. It's a musical pause. Um, all of our psalms were, were the original hymn book, and they would, it would be an interlude to allow the Spirit of the Lord space in the song to allow the Spirit of the Lord to do its work. Yeah. <laughs> God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He will turn again, he will have compassion upon us, he will subdue our iniquity, and thou wilt pronounce all their sins with the death of his people. Thou wilt perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What shall we then say to you, if God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely forgive us all things? Shall they be who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors in him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 
nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our King. Sing praises. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. All the inhabitants of the world, as well as on the earth, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, and we shall be For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. May his great name grow exalted and sanctified in the world that he created as he will in your lifetimes and in your days and in the lifetimes of all the house of Israel swiftly and soon. Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, exalted, extolled, mighty, appraised, and lauded be the name of Yeshua, the Holy One. Blessed is he, beyond any blessing and song, praise and consolations that are uttered in the world. Amen. He who makes peace in his heights, may he make peace upon us and upon all Israel. Amen. Amen. May he makes peace in his heights. May he make peace upon us and upon all Israel. Amen. Okay. Shofarim, you can take a seat. Thank you very, very much. Let's give them a round of applause again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent job. Let's do this together. Master of the world, who was king before any form was created, at the time when he made all through his will, then his name was called king. And after all is gone, he, the awesome one, will reign alone. And he was, and he is, and he will be in splendor. And he is one, and there is no second to compare to him or be his equal. Without beginning, without end, to him is the power and rulership. And he is Yeshua, my God and my living redeemer and the rock of my salvation in times of distress. He is my banner, and he is a refuge for me, my portion on the day I cry out. Into his hand I commit my spirit. When I sleep and when I wake, Jehovah is with me, 
and I am not afraid, for his perfect love will cast out all fear. Okay, so uh, if you can pass out the cups over there, and um, Janine, would you grab a bottle of wine and a thing of grape juice? And uh, can you bring the hall in, Andrew? While we're doing that, um, any questions or concerns? All concerns go to the Dave Yoder department. <laughs> It's good to be here with friends and family. It's really good to be here. The Bible says, blessed is he who knows the joyful sound. The joyful sound. Uh, yeah, so everybody take a small cup full, uh, and take some wine and pour some grape juice, unless you're under a Nazarite vow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then, hey, Layton, just grab a stack of the cups and just set them down there at each table. Yeah, just grab a stack of them. We are we are peacefully protesting this evening, so uh, the coronavirus will not touch you by touching the bread that other people touched. Okay, so everybody should have either, and I don't, uh, do we have any more of the small little cups? Janine, can I get Uh, no, this, this wine that you're drinking actually is 
Benami. Um, it comes, I believe, from the Galilee, right? Uh, and the reason I, I like to get this wine, um, not because it's amazing wine or that I, even I'm an, a wine expert, you know, I don't really know anything about wine, um, but I, I like where it came from and I like the name. And um, so to give you the illusion that it, that it comes from, Ben Ami means son of my people. Okay, and, and there's an illusion. This, this winery in particular is actually located in the Galilee. And it's the place where um, the prophet Hosea, you know, the book of Hosea. Yeah. Okay, and so where this, all of this stuff first started happening when they started getting conquered was up in that region, which Galilee of the nations, the Bible calls it Galilee of the Gentiles, but it's, it's up on that in that northern area in northern Israel. And he says in Hosea that, um, actually, let me just read it to you real quick so I don't stumble over myself. Um, okay. Hosea 1.10, it says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place it was said unto them, You are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Jezreel means to scatter or to sow. Um, John chapter 1 gives you an, a, an arrow pointing right to Hosea chapter 1, where he says that, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God to them to even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God it was God's desire that you were born again and so the reason that I like this winery is because it, it's in the place, literally in the place, this winery, where it was said unto them, you are not my people. And now there's a winery there that is named son of my people. So it's very, something that's very special to me. So, um, all right. So let's hold up our Kiddush cup. Very high priced Kiddush cups we have here. Okay. All together, blessed are you, Jehovah our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Gave me a little more than I bargained for, Dane. True. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You weren't supposed to remember that. <laughs> I wasn't. All right. So you should have pollen and you should have a little bit of honey at your table. Okay. So take a little bit, a little dab of honey and put it on your hollow. And these are, these are traditional kiddush um, for this time. Give me a little bit. <laughs> and on me, it's fighting me. Um, okay, everybody have their holla and yeah. their honey. Okay. Why does anybody know why honey is a prominent part of this? It's it's this. Go ahead. Yeah, that's uh, that. I I think it applies. This feast day 
and, and this is something that I've struggled with in my life in the past is thinking of end time scenarios as something that is a very bad thing towards God's people. God's mad at his people and he's coming to waste everybody away. And to some degree, judgment will occur. I'm not diminishing that. But understanding the Bible from the standpoint of we have a covenant keeping God and his people have been in bondage, then you have the all of these allusions to the sweetness of what this time will be for us. Okay, this is a time where, yes, the world, the Lord will go and fight against his enemies. But let me let me show you something real quick. I feel like the Lord would have me go here. I want to go to Isaiah 61 real quick. Isaiah 61 um, is about Yom Kippur. Okay, so God is gathering his people together on the Feast of Trumpets. It's the sound that wakes us up and says it's time to come. So I actually, for my kids, we live out in the country and they go off traipsing through the countryside and I don't know where they are. I go out the back door and I blow the shofar. And because it's it, the sound carries and, and what is what happens when I blow the shofar? You come home. And so I'm using that as an illustration for them to teach them a practical application of what this feast is. Daddy is bringing his kids home. And so it will be sweet in this time. Okay? So when Yeshua stood up in the synagogue and he read this, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And he stopped there and he sat down. The acceptable year of the Lord is God accepting his people for the upcoming year. Does that make sense? It's a re-up of the covenant, the annual covenant. And so it, there is an acceptance. And if you just take the English word of atonement, at one minute, where we become one, at one minute. The Feast of Trumpets, is, the purpose of the Feast of Trumpets is to gather us and point us to the justice and the freedom. Now, the justice that you see on the Judgment Day, when you think of Judgment Day, do you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger shooting off Uzis and, you know, like, is that what you think? That's what I used to think, right? I mean, I used to love that movie. Well, when I, when I think of, when I used to think of Judgment Day, I thought God's really angry. If I could sum it up, God's really angry. He wants to kill a whole bunch of people, right? And in some regard, that's true, but not towards us. If you have somebody, a Pharaoh, who's been afflicting your children, and you come out in a rage and fury, the Bible says he actually he will sound like a woman giving childbirth, screaming. He would be so angry. He's going against our enemies. But for us, it's good tidings to the meek. Yes, exactly. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. It's a rescue mission. And so this is, this, this is what this feast is. It's a sweetness for us. Okay? And, and that's where when we, when we can have our minds in covenant and we're thinking in covenant and we're walking in covenant and we're and we're understanding our god as a covenant keeping god and not as a balancing of the scales god where he's either mad or he's happy that's paganism our god is a covenant god he's a promise keeping god he made promises and he's going to fulfill them and that's what this feast is about and he's he's he, like Stacy said, he's on a rescue mission to gather his children, and then he's going to take his blood, and he's going to atone for all of the things that were held against us, and all the blotting out of the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, taking them out of the way, nailing them to the cross, and now he's going to bring us in and give us this peace, okay? And, and it, it skips over. Now, I stopped there for a second, and he said, now I'm preaching for a second, but if you just bear with me. He stops, and he says, the acceptable year of the Lord. First, he brings his children. He says, I accept you. I accept you. I accept you, not because of what you've done. And that's what we read in this, in this, uh, this prayer service. Do you see that? 
This wasn't about us. This was about God and, and what he has done and that he accepts us on behalf of what his will was. And then he's going to turn and it's the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. You see, you have you have devils and, and, and worldwide systems and things that have been used to enslave you and to beat you down. And the Lord's going to come and war against those things and destroy them. And then he's going to appoint to them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the royal joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste places. Did I lose my battery? And they shall build the old waste places. And they shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. You see, it's the exact same thing that happened when they came out of Babylon. And they went back and they rebuilt the temple of the Lord. If you want to know what we'll be doing at the very beginning of, of the thousand year reign of, of Messiah, read Ezra and Nehemiah. That's what we'll be doing. We're rebuilding a temple. Only here's the thing. You're the temple. You're the temple that's being rebuilt. And that's the purpose of this. Okay? So gather, Feast of Trumpets gathers us in so that God can wipe the slate clean so that we can actually have a chance to breathe. And then he wants to rebuild us up. And we talked about a couple weeks ago. He wants to break us down. He wants to take us out that he might take us in. He wants to break us down so he can build us back up. And that's where we're going right now. So the, I, I don't know which one of you are going to preach on the Day of Atonement, but, but I'm going to tee you up, whoever it is, which, whichever one of you are. I'm tee you up tomorrow. Go ahead, Tom. Can you come up here so they can hear on, on or, No, we're preaching now, Tom. We may have to just run Well, Ezra 3, chapter, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. Uh, it speaks about the day of joy of rebuilding the temple and laying the foundations all over again. It is the Feast of Trumpets. It is on that day. And that's what it's all about. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I can't stand in front of these people without preaching a little bit, even when I'm talking to my family. So bear with me for a second. Um, but that's what this is about, okay? This isn't about saying some prayers and, you know, and we come together, we have a good time, we're here to enjoy each other's presence, but this is about giving honor to the king who laid it out there for us and he wants to gather us in. And at some point in time, we're literally going to live this. We're literally going to live this. Okay. So then it'll be sweet. Back to the back to the hollow and the, and the honey. Okay. So let's take our bread. Blessed are you, Jehovah our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Okay. Sorry, mom, for talking with my mouth full. You you have bowls with apples. Okay. Um, Grab a piece of apple. Put some honey on it. Why are we blessing? Why are we blessing the Lord for the fruit of the tree? He provides it. That's that's the most logical answer and he's 100 percent correct let's go let's go a layer deeper i know you know the answer <laughs> see what you did there let's why why are we blessing the lord for the fruit of the tree well the lord just teed me up for this thank you lord Isaiah 61, verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And in the book of Ezekiel, I believe you spoke about it a, a week or two ago, 
Um, at the end of the book of Ezekiel, he's given a vision of the temple. And out of this temple, there's a river, and it's, you know, it's the ankles, and then the knees, and then the waist, and then the chest, and then it's, and then Pastor David did? Okay. And, um, but on each side of that river, there are trees that bear 12 different kinds of fruit. And the leaves of that tree, the, the 12 different kinds of, of fruit represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Okay? So who is the tree? You are the tree. Yeshua is the tree. But you are the tree planted by the Lord. And the fruit of your life and the leaves of your life are for the healing of the nations that are around you. And that temple that has the water that goes out and heals all of the seas, okay? In the book of Revelation, the seas are typified as people's tongues. The woman who sits on many waters, the woman who sits on many waters, the many waters are people's tongues. It's multitudes of people. And this temple from Ezekiel goes out, the water goes out, out of this temple. Think of it like this. If any of you thirst, let him ask of me and I'll give you rivers of living water, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, correct? So this, this temple, yes, it's Yeshua, but it's also us, and the water that comes out of us, and we are the trees, and the fruit of our lives, and the leaves of our trees go out to the nations, and they are for the healing of the nations. We are God encounters everywhere we go with every single person that we meet, meet and the fruit of our lives and the testimony of our life, which I believe is the leaves. So you think of it like this, the leaves of this book. The testimony of our life is for the healing of the nations from where we have been scattered. And if you, you pay attention in the book, whenever he says, I'm going to gather all my people, that all of the world may know that I am the Lord that does sanctify Israel. Okay? There's going to be a lot of people, just like there was a mixed multitude that came out with the children of Israel in Egypt. There will be multitudes of people who grab a hold of you, Tom, who grab a hold of you, Heidi, and say, I'm going with you because I know God is with you. I know God is with you because they're going to see the distinction. Okay? So, um, can I have an apple with some help? No? Your mouth is full. No. Okay. All right. Everybody have apple and honey. Let's bless the Lord. Blessed bless are you, Jehovah, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the tree. Okay. Before we do this, can I ask one favor of the Carmelites? Would you come up and sing, rather than me saying the blessing, would you all sing the blessing for us over this group? Would that be okay? I know I'm putting you all on the spot right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. You don't have to. But, and of course, I'm going to stand and watch. I'm not going to join in. The blessing. Yeah. So the next, the next bless, the next thing that closes us out would be the priestly blessing. But rather than me just saying the priestly blessing, I would rather be talented people sing it over us, if that would be okay. I was 
hope you all have had a uh, wonderful, wonderful evening, or at least somewhat good evening. Um, I want to thank the Jerry family and Ivy for working us out. So thank all of you and everybody joining online. Thank all of you for a wonderful evening, a wonderful dinner, a wonderful fellowship. Thank you for driving. If you've driven, I know you all drove quite a ways. So uh, Colleen as well, you're down there in <laughs> almost in Pike County. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, Jehovah shall bless you and he shall keep you. Jehovah shall make his face to shine upon you and he shall be gracious to you. Jehovah shall lift up his countenance upon you and he shall give you peace. Amen. So we can close with this. Roshana Tova Tikatevu. What that means is to a good year being written in the book. And we know that this is the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Let your names be found written there. Let your names be found written there. Thank you all. Wonderful, wonderful job. Thanks everybody for joining online. Give the Lord. You are dismissed. You have fulfilled all the religious requirements of being acceptable. <laughs> you, yeah, the booklets, take them home. They're yours. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If, if you would like a soft copy, I have PDFs of these I can email to you. Um, so... Praise the Lord. Lashana Tova to all and to all a good night. See what I did there, Scott? <laughs>